Now that you have a basic understanding of how to construct a Kalman filter, we're going to explore a couple of ways that the Kalman method can be used to generate trade signals and also help you calculate better hedge ratios for beta hedge strategies. We will design a Kalman estimator and compare its value to moving averages calculated with varying time windows. We will also use the Kalman framework to estimate regression coefficients. Kalman estimators are used in momentum strategies where a trading signal is generated by a moving average crossover. They are also used to dynamically adjust head ratios in a mean reverting trading strategy. The Kalman filter updates its estimates at every time step and tends to weight more recent observations more heavily than older ones. This is similar to, but not the same as an exponential moving average. This provides useful estimates of rolling parameters of the data. When using a Kalman filter, there's no window length that you need to specify. This is useful for computing the moving average if that's what you are interested in, or for smoothing out estimates of other quantities, such as the moving sharp ratio. We'll use both a Kalman filter and a 50 and 100 day moving average to estimate the rolling mean of a data series. We hope that the mean describes our observations well, so it shouldn't change too much when we add an observation. Therefore, we assume that it evolves as a random walk with a small error term. The mean is the model's guess for the mean of the distribution from which the measurements are being drawn, so our prediction of the next value is simply equal to our estimate of the mean. We assume that the observations have a variance of one around the rolling mean. Our initial guess for the mean is zero. Please use the code above to load pricing data, construct a Kalman filter, and calculate the rolling mean of prices for Apple. Keep in mind that we are assuming the transition and observation matrices are equal to one, and the initial state is assumed to be zero. We will compare the Kalman estimate of the rolling mean to the 50 and 100 day moving averages for the same price series. Our initial guess for the mean is zero, but the filter quickly realizes that that is incorrect and adjusts its estimate to converge with the Apple price series. You can see that the Kalman estimate smooths out the series less than the moving averages. The advantage of the Kalman filter is that we don't need to select a window length, so we run less risk of overfitting. We do open ourselves up to overfitting with some of the initialization parameters for the filter but those are slightly easier to objectively define. There's no free lunch and we can't eliminate overfitting, but a Kalman filter is more rigorous than a moving average and generally more effective. Kalman estimators are used in strategies where the trading signal is generated by a moving average crossover. Let's figure out the inputs to our Kalman filter. We'll say that the state of our system is the line that the observations are following with parameters alpha and beta. Our initial guess for these parameters is zero and zero, with a covariance matrix, which describes the error of our guess of all ones. As in the example of the rolling mean, we assume that our parameters follow a random walk, which means the transition matrix is the identity. With a small error term, transition's covariance is a small number times the identity. To get from the state of our system to an observation, we dot the state beta alpha with x sub i1 to get beta x sub i plus alpha equals y sub i. So our observation matrix is just a column of ones glued to x. Please use the code above to model randomness in the series and construct a Kalman filter to evolve our estimates of the parameters alpha and beta for Apple and SPY. We assume that the variance of our observations, Y, is two. Now we are ready to use our observations of Y to evolve our estimates of the parameters alpha and beta. We will use colors to indicate the dates that the data points X sub I and Y sub I correspond to. Notice how much the parameters fluctuate over long periods of time. We are basing a trading algorithm on this, such as something that involves beta hedging. 
it's important to have the best and the most current estimates of beta. In order to minimize clutter, we will only plot every fifth common estimate of alpha and beta. We'll also adjust the plot axes to improve visibility. Notice that although each of the state estimates takes into account all previous observations, they fit the more recent data better than the older data. This allows the filter to adapt to structural changes in the data over time. We now calculate returns from the price data and run the Kalman filter to estimate alpha and beta for returns. Once again, we only plot every fifth estimate in order to minimize clutter. Although the raw data is much more jumbled here, we can see the regression line evolving. The estimate of beta increases gradually from around zero to about the same as the ordinary least squares regression shown by the heavier black line. You can read more about this and other topics related to Kalman filter and finance at the link given here.